Now in this part we're told then that there's a point A that lies on both curves and the X and Y coordinates are both positive. And what we've got to do express the coordinates of A in the form P plus Q root 3 and R plus S root 3 where P, Q, R and S are integers. So how are we going to do this one then? Well clearly A when you look at the graphs has to be this point here because both the X and Y coordinates are positive. So let's just mark this point in then first of all as the point A. That's what we're looking for. Now do you remember in the previous part when we were trying to find the equation that is satisfied by x at the point of intersection of the two curves, we showed that that equation was, in fact, x bracket x squared minus 8x plus 4 equals 0. So we know that we're looking to solve this equation. Now because it's already factorized and it equals 0, that means we can either say this factor or this factor equals 0. So therefore we can say that x equals 0 or the other factor, the quadratic factor x squared minus 8x plus 4, that would equal 0. Now the point is at a x can't equal 0 because it's a positive value. So we know that at a x squared minus 8x plus 4 should equal 0. So we can say that x squared minus 8x plus 4 must equal 0. Now to solve this quadratic equation normally I would want to factorize it. But when you look at the type of answer that we've got to give, this is the x coordinate that we're expecting out of this equation. And because it's got a square root here this doesn't suggest to me that this is going to factorize. It suggests to me that we've got to use the quadratic formula. Do you remember the quadratic formula? Let's just quick reminder. When you've got a quadratic equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, remember that you can solve this by saying that x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of what is often called the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, and all that is divided by 2a. So using this to solve for x, what are we going to get? Well, let's just come down here now. What we've got is that x would equal minus b, well b is minus 8, so we're going to have minus minus 8, which is plus 8, then it's plus or minus the square root of b squared. So we know that b is minus 8, so we've got minus 8 squared. And then it's minus 4 times a times c. Now a is the value in front of x squared, which is a 1, and c is the 4. And it's all divided by 2a, so that's going to be 2 times 1. I'll just put 2 times 1 there even though I know it's 2. Now if you simplify this you end up with x equaling 8 plus or minus the square root of, well that's 64 and that's minus 16 so 64 minus 16 is square root of 48. And that's all divided by 2. Now as I say we're getting this clue here that it's got something to do with root 3 which would mean that, if we're correct, 3 should go into 48. And indeed it does. It goes in 16 times. So we can think of this as equaling 8 plus or minus the square root of 16 multiplied by 3. And that's all divided by 2. Now, can you remember that if you've got a product of two numbers underneath the square root sign, then by one of the third rules we can think of this as the root of 16 multiplied by the root of 3. So what we've got here then is 8 plus or minus the square root of 16 multiplied by the square root of 3. I'll just drop the multiplication sign, all divided by 2. And the square root of 16 is 4, so we've got 8 plus or minus 4 root 3, 
all over 2. Now we can simplify this a bit further. We could divide through by 2. 2 into 2 goes 1. We've got two terms on the top, so you've got to remember you've got to divide 2 into both of them. So 2 into 8 goes 4, and 2 into the 4 goes 2. So what we've got here then is that x equals, again we'll come down here, okay, just so we can keep it on the same screen. Let's just remove this now actually, it's just taking up a bit too much room. So what we've got is x equals 4 plus or minus 2 root 3 all over 1. But I can obviously forget about that one. So we've got now two values for x, either 4 plus 2 root 3 or 4 minus 2 root 3. So there's two points of intersection other than this point here where x was 0. Well here's one of them. Where does the other one occur? Well, if we were to look closely at these graphs, we'd find that this graph would gradually come down here. This graph would come out like this. So there'd be a point of intersection somewhere down here. It would be a value of x which is greater than the 4. Now, can you see that 4 plus 2 root 3 would be a value greater than the 4 here? We want the other one for a because it's got to be a value less than 4. So it's got to be 4 minus 2 root 3. So we could say that at a, x equals 4 minus 2 root 3. And you can see we've got this in this format. p would be the 4 if we were asked for that. And q, be careful, would be minus 2. Okay, well we've got the x-coordinate now at A. All we need to do is get the y-coordinate that corresponds to this. So all I need to do is substitute this into either this equation or this equation. And it seems sensible to pick the easier of the two. And I would suggest it's this one here because we haven't got any x-squareds involved. But I'll leave it to you to try, say, substituting into this one and check out that you can get the same answer. It's a good exercise. But I'm going to substitute in here. So I'm going to say that, OK, we've got A equals this. And I'm going to say sub into Y equals X bracket 4 minus X. And if I do that, what we have is that therefore y equals, well, the x value is 4 minus 2 root 3. We'll put that in brackets. And it's being multiplied by 4 minus x. So I'll put a square bracket here and go 4 minus, and then the x again is 4 minus 2 root 3. So when I clean this up, we've got 4 minus 4 which is 0, and then I've got minus, minus 2 root 3, so it's going to be just simply 2 root 3. So I'm going to put 2 root 3 at the front here, and then multiply it with the 4 minus 2 root 3. And what do we get if we do that? Well, we end up with 2 root 3 being multiplied by the 4, which is going to give me 8 root 3. I'll put that down here. And then I'm going to have 2 root 3 times minus 2 root 3. Well, 2 times 2 is 4, and root 3 times root 3 is 3. So you end up with 4 times 3, which is 12. But then you've got this minus here, so it'll be minus 12. Minus 12 plus the 8 root 3. And I've purposely turned it round so that it's got this particular format. The R is the minus 12, and the s is plus 8. So at the end of the day, we were asked to find the coordinates of a in this form. So let's just finish off by saying, therefore, a has coordinates. And the x coordinate we found was 4 minus 2 root 3. So just put that in, 4 minus 2 root 3. And the y coordinate was minus 12 plus 8 root 3. Okay, and there you have it.